Welcome back to my channel. Oh my god, Mina's posting on YouTube? Guys, I post like once every four months. I'm gonna do a story time of how I got disowned by my very strict brown family. Um, I've already done the story time on TikTok, but I wasn't able to make it very long. I'm gonna do this makeup look right here. Anyways, so story time of how I got disowned. I hope you guys enjoy and yeah, go grab some popcorn because there is a lot to get into. So I feel like I should give you guys a little bit of a backstory first. God, look at my forehead. It looks huge. Nothing irks me more than having hair in my face while I'm doing my makeup. Like, I don't know how girls have their hair like in front of them and are doing their makeup. Like, does not work for me. Need a nice spray. So I'm gonna give you guys a little backstory on who I am. Currently 22 years old. I'm from an Afghan background. Uh, I grew up with three brothers. I was the only girl obviously in my family. My family was very traditional, very religious. Like I actually grew up wearing the hijab, which everyone finds crazy because they're like, you're literally a slut now. Like you dress like a whore. There's no way that you ever wore a hijab. Well, I did, and I was also very religious myself. I felt that I was held back from a lot growing up as a kid. Charlotte Tilbury, by the way, I'll show the products as I'm using them. The shade says medium. I grew up with a lot of restrictions. You know, there's a lot that I wasn't allowed to do growing up. And, you know, being a kid and stuff like that, I blamed a lot of it on religion. So that is also what made me less religious because I kind of needed something to blame for why I couldn't do things. And I know a lot of people were like, oh my God, it's not religion, whatever, but I'm not saying that it was, I'm just saying that's what I felt. I could blame it on growing up as a kid, like, oh, I can't do this because uh, my religion and this and that, and girls are not allowed to do that. So I, I would say that I was a pretty decent kid up until high school. I was that kid with really severe cystic acne growing up in middle school like I wasn't I didn't have like that many friends like I just had like my small group of friends and everything and then once I reached high school I kind of cleared up my skin and that's when I took my hijab off as well so I felt like I could fit in more with all the kids okay we're gonna go in with this house labs foundation and 175 neutral. Anyway, so I just, I felt like I could fit in a lot more. I was a little bit more confident. I could, I could essentially dress how I wanted because I wasn't wearing my hijab anymore. I could wear a skirt and I could wear a tank top and like no one would look at me weird. So I felt like I could get away with it. I would start buying clothes. I would send them to my friend's house. Also, this foundation looks crazy on camera right now. I have all these clothes or whatever, or like I would lie to my parents and be like, oh no, like I wear this tank top under this shirt. Like I don't wear it by itself. That's how I would justify buying certain clothes. I would put like really baggy things on top of it, a sweater, or I would like wear these sweatpants. Hold on, I need to wet my beauty blender. Oh my goodness. Ow. So yeah, I would, I was one of those girls that changed at school. I was a transformer as what I guess we would call it. And it just progressively, I guess, got worse. Like I would start dressing like a little bit more prov provocatively. And by provocatively, I mean by like brown parent standards. I wasn't dressing that inappropriately. Like it was, it was just more Western style, I guess. The boys started having interest in me. The t conversation about boys was very taboo in my family. My mom always told me, don't look at boys, don't talk to them, don't breathe in their, their direction, don't be friends with them, you can't be friends with boys, whatever. So naturally, they just appealed to me. I look like a Simpson right now. I really hope I can fix this. So I ended up having a boyfriend in grade 11. I actually had two boyfriends in grade 11. The first one didn't really last. The second one also didn't really last, but I went with him to prom and I write about prom and all that. But that's, that's a whole other story. So 
I'm basically living this double life. At home, you know, I'm like this really quiet girl. I don't do much, I don't go out. Well, I wasn't really allowed to go out. I never like went to parties or anything like that. My plan always was eventually I'm gonna grow up. Eventually I'm gonna have my own job. I'm not gonna have to worry about sneaking around. Like I just have to kind of bear with it for a little while. And then when I get older and I move out and stuff, I'll be fine. So grade 12 came and it was time to start looking for universities i just really wanted to get away from my family like i honestly just didn't like them i was just salty i just felt like they wouldn't let me do anything and i felt so trapped and it was just not a fun time living there and like i couldn't even hold a job because i wasn't allowed to like work late too late during the day and it was just not fun and i felt really left out so many things that i could do in life that i was just being held back on and all that. That's how I felt during that time. So I had a lot of resentment towards my parents. Um, so I just really wanted to get away for university. And I was always a really good kid in school. I never got in trouble. I always had good grades. That stuck out at the time. Like now my brothers are all very smart and they're doing so well in life right now. But back then, everyone was a troublemaker and I was like the only good child, I guess. But my parents knew I was doing well academically and I told them that I had to go away for university. The best schools, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention what products I use. I just use this um, L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer in Pecan and then I went in with this Tarte Shape Tape and it's just in a lighter co color. I don't know what color it is, but it's just a lighter shade. I'm just gonna let my concealer sit for a while. I'm gonna go in with a Charlotte Tilbury um, Flawless Filter in the shade 7 Deep. And I'm literally just gonna put like two dots because <laughs> it says two dots and puts like five. I'm putting like very little because this is like super pigmented. So at the time, my parents knew that my goal was to become a psychologist. I was like, I'm super into mental health and because, you know, I'm depressed. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I really wanted to be a psychologist at the time. Mom, dad, there's a really great program at Western University, which I live in. I born and raised in Toronto. Um, and this university is in London, Ontario, which is two hours away from Toronto. So this was like one of the further schools and I was like, I have to go to this school, dad. Please, they have the best program. I'll do anything. I was just begging them and I started crying and I was like, I just want to be successful and like, that's all I want. I feel like you guys are holding me back or whatever. I remember crying to my mom about it. I was genuinely crying, but I was crying because this was my last shot at freedom and I'm just never going to have it. And I just so badly wanted to go away. Do you want me to wear a hijab? I'll wear a hijab. I was like, do you want me to get married? I was like, I will get married if it means I can go to this school. You can marry me off. I promise. Let me go. And then they were like, shit, she genuinely really needs to go to this school. Such a good program. It's psychology, guys. You can take psychology at literally any university. And first of all, what are you going to do with a psychology degree? No offense, but which I realized later on and I ended up switching my programs. I actually, I've graduated uh, with a bachelor's of science in nursing, which I'm not even using my degree, but just a heads up. Okay, I'm gonna use my Vera Beauty blush in Happy because that's my mood right now, right guys? Um, my mom's like, I'll talk to your dad about it. We have a conversation and hold on. So we have a conversation about it and my dad is basically like, you know what? I'm gonna let you apply to this school on the condition that you come home every weekend. And so basically he said that he would come and pick me up every single weekend. I wouldn't essentially like party or whatever, or like be up to no good. And I, and I had to share my location with him as well. And I was like, yes, obviously, because you know me and you know, I was a sneaky girl growing up. I was gonna find my, find my way around it. Super happy because now they're letting me go. And then one of my best friends as well was also planning to go to the same school 
And so my parents and her parents would like coordinate together and they would drive us to school. The strictness, I guess, still continued on from my parents. They would get mad at me if I made any mention of a boy. The guy that lived beside me, I was in a dorm and it was kind of like a hallway and then there was rooms and everyone lived in these rooms and I lived with my roommate. So we had this room together, her bed on one side, my bed on one side. Um, and there were guys living right beside us and literally as I'm moving in, these guys are like unpacking their stuff and my dad's like, why are there guys living right beside you? I was like, oh dad, no, they don't really come out. This room is just like, you know, where I'll stay in, you know, I won't come out. Like what is there to do? There's just a hallway. It's not like we're gonna be in the hallway partying and puking on the floor and you know, getting lit. Never, would never do that, ever. Um, so anyways, I move into university. Um, the first month guys, or the first two weeks, I am going feral i am going crazy also oh wait never mind i guys i am the perfect is example of a girl with strict parents gone wild i just was boy crazy it was bad like i look back and like i'm so embarrassed with the way that i was before like it was not cute mm, i'm such a hoe like no ew that was not cute i was cringe it definitely screamed insecure as well, I won't lie. I was just about that life. I wanna go clubbing, whatever. And then I got sick of it so quick. It kind of just died out. I'm not really that into this as I thought I was. And I think it was just cause you know, I was like restricted for so long. So I kind of went crazy when I got that freedom. But then after having it for a little bit, I kind of kind of got over it. I was basically kind of chilling for a little bit and I was talking to this guy that I met off Tinder. Sorry, I had Tinder or whatever. I think we were going on a second date or something. We had a really good time the first time that we met. So we planned a second one. That night that I'm literally ready about to go see this guy, my dad calls me. I made the biggest mistake of my life sending you here. Just, just watch. I know everything. He's like, I know. I know what you've done. And I was like, what did I do? Like, oh my God, like this. He's like, I have pictures. And I'm like, pictures? Like, what do you mean pictures? I was, I was like, my dad has pictures? Pictures of what? Ah! So anyways, he's like, I'm coming. He's like, I'm coming to Western. We're gonna talk about this. I'm not saying anything to you right now. Cause I was like, dad, what? What happened? Tell me. I don't know what I did. Tell me right now. And I'm crying, guys. I am crying so hard on the phone. Like, this is the end. Like, he's like, you're gonna drop out of school, blah, blah, blah. I just knew, guys. I just have this gut feeling sometimes with certain things, like being a content creator, for example. I just had that gut feeling inside of me. And I started doing makeup or whatever and stuff like that. But I had this gut feeling about. Oh my God, this is it. That thing that I always thought that would happen when I was like 25 years old, I was like, this is happening right now. My dad is going to kick me out because it's either everything blows up in my face about everything that I've done and I have to go back home and I'm basically, my freedom is gone or I choose to leave. How am I gonna leave? How am I gonna handle it? I don't have a job. I work at Walmart. I make $15, not even 15 at the time. It was like 14 or something. I'm, I'm broke. He hadn't paid for my tuition. He hadn't paid for the second half of my tuition. So that was like another $10,000 that I didn't have. So two days later, I remember it's a Wednesday. He comes to the school. I'll probably make this into parts, but. Ooh. I'm using this Huda Beauty powder in banana bread. Uh, literally my favorite powder. I don't know how it's gonna show up on camera. I hope it doesn't look too yellow, but. I basically like to put setting spray on and then I'll like blend in my concealer again with my sponge and then I'll go in with the Huda Beauty. All right, so the day comes, I'm literally crying for like the next two days, talking to everyone on my dorm about it. I'm talking to like my advisors. They're like, don't expect the worst. Your dad won't kick you out or whatever. It's going to happen. I know it's gonna happen. There's only two options here and I don't, I don't wanna be more restricted. Meanwhile, I'm still talking to this guy. Oh my God, that's, he he was like a six month situationship. That is another story time that I've already done, but like I will do a longer one on him because he traumatized me. But I'm freaking out, Wednesday come, dad pulls up. So I live in this dorm, right? So there's like a little roundabout thing where you can come to pick up your kids or whatever. He pulls up, 
I go and sit in the car. I can't remember the conversation exactly. It was all a blur. I literally thought he was going to kill me. I was ready to step out of the car and be like, you need to go get out of here. This is so weird to me. He's like, you should have told me you wanted to have all this sex. What? I've seen photos of you half naked, or not half naked, naked. Because in my dad's eyes, me in a bikini is naked. So, well, it's fair enough, fair enough. Um, so he's like, I've seen pictures of you. People have sent them to me. And I was like, who, who sent it to you? Cause I'm like, I'm about to cut this bitch off. Whoever's snaking me like that. He's like, I don't know what I did wrong. I felt so guilty, oh my goodness. I was mostly scared, honestly, than guilty. So my nose looks so weird. If you guys didn't know, I literally recently got a nose job. So that's why I kind of look like a pig right now. I told him I, was, I did have a boyfriend in high school. We didn't really do anything. Hand holding, total lie. Oh my God. Uh, sorry dad, if you see this. It was pretty innocent. Like we barely really did anything to be honest. I wouldn't even consider it a relationship. Like it was just the dumbest thing ever with these two guys. And one of them is just like, I kind of just went to prom and we stopped talking after two months. Like it wasn't a huge thing. The conversation is honestly a blur. He's just asking me about things. I'm like, no, like, no, 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 you got it all wrong. I was like, I'm still a good girl. Like I do well in school. I'm not a bad person. Well, usually I would go in with my makeup by Mario Bronzer, but it doesn't look like I have it here. So, oh, it's right here. Essentially he was like, I'm, coming up to your dorm. I want to come up to your room and I want to look at your closet because he wanted to see if I actually actually dressed like a hoe, you know? Um, because he's seen photos and he thought they were fake at first or something, but like he just wanted to confirm that, you know, my daughter does dress like this. I'm not an idiot, guys. I grew up with my parents. I know how they think. I've gotten away, like I've been this close to being caught so many times and I've gotten away with it because I know how they think. So obviously I took out all the clothes, anything that could incriminate me, I pulled out and I put into one of my friend's closets. I put all my clothes, all the bad clothes, like lingerie and like crop tops and all that stuff. I put that all in her closet. So my closet was fine. I was like, dad, I'm gonna be honest with you for once in my life, you're not gonna find anything when you go into my room. Like there is nothing that you will find that will prove to you that I am this way. Yes, I do dress. I do have bikinis. I do have crop tops. I do dress like this. Like I do dress like a Western girl essentially. Um, and I was like, so I, I just don't feel comfortable with you going up to my room, to my dorm and, you know, causing a scene or whatever, because like I'm friends with all these people on my floor. I felt danger. I don't know why, but at the time I thought he would hurt me. I thought he would do something to me. I already despised my parents at that point because I felt so restricted. Like I already did not like them. I just felt terrified of what he was gonna do in front of all these people. I didn't wanna risk anything. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable with you going up to my room. And he's like, I already called in and let them know that I was coming up. That's not how it works. I was like, just because you like you have no right to come up there, you can't just call and say you're going up. Like I have the key. I can choose whether I let you up or not. He's like kind of freaking out on me. He's like, you have to let me go up into your room. And I'm like, dad, you're not gonna find anything in my room. I hit everything already. I'm being honest with you. Yes, I am this way. And he's like, you're coming home with me. I'm not coming back with you. And he's like, if you don't let me come up to your room, we're done. We're never speaking again. Holy shit, this is happening right now. Halfway through the conversation, I stepped out of the car because I was so scared he was gonna drive off with me. When I told him that I was not coming back home with him, I said it after I got out of the car because I did not want him to drive off. And he's like, okay, stop acting crazy. Can you just get in the car and talk to me? Essentially what happened at the end was he's like, fine, if you're not gonna let me in your room, then I'm driving off. I don't blame him. You know, he was very emotional. Like his heart was broken. Story break guys. Can't fit this in one video. I feel like it's too long. That was part one. And thanks for watching, but part two will be up as soon as I edit it and upload it. But thanks for watching.